What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London, welcome to Red Rock Canyon, 25 miles out of Las Vegas and behind me I've got the exotic driving experiences, Shelby GT350 as promised in my last video. As promised in my video when I drove to Lake Mead with exotic driving experiences, they have lent me the keys to this car to give it a proper rigorous test and told me that the Red Rock Canyon is the best place to do that. So in the distance somewhere over there is a tight twisty loop called the Scenic Loop Drive which goes all the way through the canyon and back out the other side there and seeing as I'm in America I thought for this episode talking about the Mustang as a whole and could it replace the Audi A1 I thought that I'd recruit the latest Native American from YouTube seen through glass <laughs> time in this series I've got a guest who is going to help me break this car down not only as a Shelby GT350 but as a Mustang Sam from Seen Through Glass who is uh, now a resident American howdy <laughs> and uh, yeah because this car is only available and exclusively to the American market um, I thought well let's let's go for the right or sort of just about the top end of the Mustang the Shelby GT350 350R is the proper top end. Hells yeah! Just needed America! One. I, just, I just needed one. Line. Just one bit, okay, yeah. fine. Horses. Oh, horses, really. Should we ride some? Mustang. Horses. It's a sign. It is a sign. On arrival at the Red Rock Canyon National Reserve area, it is a one way road, so essentially, we can take the racing line. $7 for a private racetrack. I mean, not officially a private racetrack, but. But it is. it is. A one-way toll road. Yeah. It's exactly the same as a Nürburgring. This is the American Nürburgring. Either of the moves. Good morning, how are you? Good. 13 mile scenic drive. Radar and Force 35. But this car's got no front plate or back plate. <laughs> Good luck explaining that to the cops. My first impressions of this car from driving it um, along with the 458 Spider, I actually had more fun driving this. I thought that this was a lot more enjoyable. It's a weird thing, but honestly, it's when you get behind... <laughs> oh yeah, you're a Ferrari fan, I forgot. But honestly, when you get behind the wheel of this car, now that I've got it in track mode, and I probably would never take it out of track mode unless I was on the motorway, the sound this car gives off, because it's not crazy power, you can never really get yourself into too much trouble. Similar to the Porsche Cayman 718, like it's the perfect amount of power for public roads. You're never really gonna be going too far over the speed limit, but the way that this car sounds, it makes it out that you're driving at about 800 miles an hour, which uh, you said, was exactly the same as Seb's Lotus. It yeah, was that was crazy, the most amazing thing about Seb Delaney's Lotus, is the sound, you're so low to the ground, the sound makes it feel like you're going a lot faster and having a lot more fun Yeah, than you are. See now, that's only 3,000 RPM. That was me, I, I, this car hasn't got rev match. <laughs> it just incentivizes you in track mode. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It sounds good. in the UK. 
okay. driving the Shelby GT350 I think let's just talk about the Mustang as a whole and could it replace the Audi A1 because the A1 was a phenomenal car I think to start with I'm going to start on a negative with the Mustang because the rear seats are pretty bad are they bad yeah because I remember I sat in the back of the Mustang and like because the slanting roof which obviously uh, gives it a really yeah. nice aesthetic look from the outside practicality wise if you've got two adults in the back there they are going to have crooked necks by the end of the journey but having said that it's so rare i'd say like 15 percent of the time when i'm driving my audi that i actually have passengers in the rear because i don't have that many friends <laughs> <laughs> so to be honest i could probably get a two-seater in my daily but all of the positives pile on top of the sort of poor headroom in the rear and just outweigh everything. I love the Mustang. I love the way it looks. If you're watching this from the US, then I think you just need to come to the UK and see how scarce the Mustang is because when you see them, you do get excited. They are very, very cool. They do look aggressive. And obviously the muscular shape just it catches your eye. I always turn my head when I see a Mustang in the UK. You probably haven't been in the UK for about three years now, so you have yeah. I, to me, it makes no sense. Yeah. But, but but in all seriousness, since being here, I now understand why Americans don't get yeah, it because yes, it's not right. that they're common. Like it's it's an every man's car, the yeah, Mustang, which yeah. is brilliant. But it's like us going like, oh my god, I saw a Fiesta earlier. He was insane. Like who talks like that? I do. My real voice. <laughs> Um, That's you putting on an English accent. Yeah, I just I don't know how to do it. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for us, I think it's an iconic car that we haven't always been had access to. Yeah. So you go, oh, Mustang. Yeah. Um, but here they are, literally one a dozen. Because it's the first time it's available in the UK for 50 years. That's kind of a big thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right-hand drive. It's an epic car, and of course, for a V8. £35,000 for a brand new car, you cannot get better. 5 litre V8, brand new for £35,000. It's one of the best valued, best value for money cars that you can probably get. I'm incredibly impressed by the Shelby GT350 as a car. I would love to get behind the wheel of this car on a track, but also the Shelby GT350R because that is the track focused. That's the one that, stripped yeah, out. That it will have even firmer suspension. It'll even sound more, more brake horsepower. Not officially confirmed by anyone, what? but a friend of mine oh, okay. uh, went to a track with a GT350R and a Porsche 911 GT3, Yeah. and the GT3 could not keep up with the 350R. Now that is very driver dependent and blah, 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 but just the fact that the it's it's it even, can happen. Yeah, it's even yeah. potential because that GT3 on the track is insane. Yeah. So even with a really bad driver, you think it would destroy most things. So I, when I heard that, I was like, holy crap, that thing must be good. Yeah. Because I'm in America and because I'm with uh, a newly American guy, I thought that it was the perfect opportunity to test a car that isn't available in the UK, but then obviously talk about the UK version. Um, and I know Car Throttle did a video of all of the, like, the 10 differences between the US and the, and the Euro Mustang. And there is a lot. There yeah, is a we lot. We get a watered down version. Yeah, we? we do. Um, but I would make that, I'd change that if I got a, if I got a Mustang. I would make sure that it, was, yeah, yeah. it had all the squash in it possible. You could just like literally rebuild it. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. So, yeah, I think the Mustang is like, at, out of all of the cars that I've tested, the S3, talked about the RS3 from experience, the A45, the hatchbacks for me, like I'd like to, I think I want to move away from the hatchbacks now, just, just thinking off the top of my head and thinking out loud, I want to move away from the Audi A1 and the two doors or the five doors. This has got two doors, but like I said previously, like I don't, I don't use the rear seat that much. I think if we're gonna round off here, the Mustang is a potential. Comment below if you think that's a good idea or not. I like the idea of going for a sports coupe um, and something a little bit more spicier than an A1. Um, and yeah, it's just a shame that the Shelby GT350 isn't available in the UK because if it was, 
and it was available on right-hand drive. Ooh. Like, I'd be Ooh. straight down to the Ford dealership. Ooh. I would. Straight. I love this I think car. I would. I think it'd just be. They would be as popular in the UK as they would be here. I think. Yeah, yeah. This is an unbelievable car. So as much as I would love to hang around here all day long, and to be honest, take a bunch of cars here and it's an awesome road and drive, awesome scenery. drive here all day long. Um, I do unfortunately have to give this car back and we are headed back to Los Angeles today, which I am very excited about. Las Vegas has been fun. SEMA has been incredible. So, I mean, I've had tons of fun. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and a quick insight into the Shelby GT350. And hopefully Sam here has enjoyed uh, being a passenger on some uh, more erratic driving on this uh, single way toll road. It's been a while since I've been in the car with quickly. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Is that your head? No. <laughs> Get me back to LA. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. I love the Shelby GT350. And comment below whether you think a Mustang's a good idea and whether you want to see a video on the BMW M3. <laughs> Holding on now. <that. laughs> and subscribe if you haven't already for a lot more content both in America and back in the UK which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not that excited about to be honest I love, yeah. I love the weather here <laughs> I'll see you soon guys cheers